You recording? I need to do a sync thing. Welcome back to the Goth with Handyman Tip Library. The reason I need to do a sync thing is because I record my lav audio. This isn't a tip, this is just me blethering on. But I record my lav mic audio to a separate little doofer, to a little um, Zoom H1 recorder. And uh, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because the audio quality from my GoPro is crap. And secondly, because every time I've tried plugging a mic directly into a camera, it seems to pick up horrible um, interference from the lights. But that doesn't happen when I record to this. I get much, much better sound quality. So that's why I'm recording separately to that, which means I have to sync up the audio and video in post, which um, only takes a matter of seconds. But that leads me on to a slight problem I have with my GoPro, which I don't know any GoPro. Uh, this is a, a Hero 5 Black Edition that I'm using, which I mainly use for the time-lapse side of things for filming customer jobs and stuff like that, which it works brilliantly for. But when I'm filming video on the GoPro, my audio and video is out of sync, very, very slightly out of sync with the uh, video, which is, I don't know if it's some firmware update I need to do or something like that, but it becomes very apparent when you do the whole clapperboard thing and you look at the actual sound wave of the audio in the video edit and you can see the audio from the GoPro ain't in sync with the video. I don't know what's going on there. I have to say, I'm not overly impressed with this GoPro. I've had a number of problems with it. The sound quality on it is terrible it randomly crashes for no reason and i have to take the battery out the battery life is terrible getting the memory card in and out is an absolute nightmare today i'm gonna give you a little tip all about scribing shelves to internal awkward shapes so like alcoves and stuff like that so Here's a little tip for you. Let me just draw something on the board first to show you what I mean. Imagine, so you're looking down um, at an alcove and you want to put some shelves in this alcove, okay? And you might have some bracing around and then you put um, a piece of wood over the bracing to make your shelf. Great, but what happens when that alcove is a weird shape? Because, mark my words, walls are never straight. So what happens if your alcove, exaggerated, is actually shaped more like that? And you want to make a shelf that either comes straight across there or goes across to that point. This is a terrible diagram. Hold on, let me, let me redo this. Imagine it's kind of goes in a bit and then it goes kind of like that and then not like that and then imagine it kind of goes a bit like that, exaggerated. And you need to cut a piece of wood to fit this. And sometimes these walls will be bowed as well, you know, just to really confuse matters. So what I do, I just cut four bits of six mil MDF. You can use anything you want. You can use cardboard or whatever, but I find six mil MDF works pretty well. You're gonna have to obviously, depending on the size of the alcove that you're doing and stuff, you, you might need um, different sizes. But this works really well. And what you want to do is cut the ends at an angle like that. You see, we've got a pointy end and a less pointy end, and we've got another one like that. And all you do is you use a glue gun, you put, you line these up, in the alcove and it's a good idea to label them up as well so we've got a left a right and we've got a front and back uh, so all you do you pop that into your alcove that goes into your left hand corner that goes into your right hand corner and then you take your back piece and you put a dab of hot glue there dab of hot glue there glue them on you push this right up to the back so that this is completely flush with the back of the unit. And then the front one doesn't matter so much. So the front one, again, dab of hot glue. This is just basically to hold it in that shape. And then once you've done that, you've got it ready to rock. 
What was that? So I'll show you here on a proper customer project. So we've got a funny shape alcove here. Dab of hot glue on either side. Then the back piece put in and lined up completely flush to the back wall. And then the front piece, that can go anywhere. And I've already put a mark on the wall where I want the shelf to end. So all I'm gonna do is transfer that mark onto my bit of wood. And what you can also then do is you can scribe the shape of the wall and what I would suggest if you're going to do the scribe as well I'm not going to bother on this because the gap's not huge and I can just cork the corners as long as I've got the rough shape but if you're wanting to do something where you can't use cork and you need it to be a fairly precise fit then you're also going to want to scribe to the shape of the wall and you can do that very easily with this all I would suggest you do is that you put some masking tape over your template and then just use a set of scribes or a compass or whatever you're going to use to scribe to the shape of the wall. I'm not going to talk too much about the actual scribing, I'm more talking about the templating of an awkward shape. And then that gives me the full shape of the piece of wood. So there you go, hope you found that useful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. These tip videos come out on a Saturday morning, not every week, but more often than not every week, depends when I get a chance to film them. So don't forget to subscribe and you'll see them popping up in your subscription video thing on YouTube. Uh, 